Starship 20 is on the verge of engaging its engines for static fire number one. SpaceX's worth just won't go down. A Starlink launch was scheduled for this weekend, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Those of you who have been viewers of my channel for years know that the vast majority of my videos don't have promotions, and that's by choice. While money is obviously required to make these episodes, informing others has always been and will always continue to be my primary motive, not money. With that being said, obviously I have been doing promotions for my Patriot Supply over the past few months, but limiting them to one video a month. And I have two good reasons for doing that. First, they're a brand I've known about for years that I trust. I own their products myself. And second, I saw what was heading our way, what's happening to our supply chain right now. And I'm telling you, if you haven't yet ordered an emergency food supply kit from my Patriot Supply, you should really look into it. As they say in the military, by failing to prepare, you're preparing to fail. The supply chain issues that are currently going on are only gonna get worse. They aren't going away. Biden's own administration is admitting to that. Hashtag empty shelves Joe was trending on Twitter last night and bare shelves Biden is trending right now. Now to be clear, that's not an excuse to go panic buying. Okay. Save some TP for the rest of us. Just go to preparewithspace.com, link in the description, and at least look into investing in a little peace of mind. But while we're on the topic, if you're not knowledgeable about what's going on in the world outside of the space genre, I also recommend you subscribe to my second channel, Cloud Liquor, where I do informative deep dive videos into current events that the mainstream media won't report on and that big tech tries to censor. So, you know, best subscribe to my Rumble channel as well. Staying informed about current events outside the space industry is important for many reasons. One being because the real world holds influence on our ability to explore space, as we've seen over the past couple years. But all right, let's get into it. Elon Musk is leading from the front line in Starbase, Texas, as his team of engineers build out the orbital launch site for future Starship Super Heavy missions. On Saturday, crews began attaching the launch tower's rocket catching arms to the carriage that will connect them to the tower. By Monday, both arms were pinned in place. Travel rollers were also being installed on the tower to allow the carriage the ability to move up and down for rocket staging on the orbital launch mount. However, one roller was converted into a 1G indicator when it was accidentally dropped. A backup is on its way. The carriage's pulley cable was also seen being integrated into the tower this week by local photographer Starship Gazer. And the tower's quick disconnect arm that will supply Starship with fuel, electricity, and stability prior to launch moved under its own power this week. On Sunday morning, a sea level and Raptor vacuum engine were spotted arriving at the launch site by Lab Padre's river cam, and then installed under SN20 the following day. Last night, a static fire was expected after notices went out to locals, but all that was done was a pressure test. We're now expecting a static fire no earlier than Monday. SpaceX's engine testing site in McGregor, Texas, has been working on the construction of a next generation Raptor facility, which recently began growing vertically. Its completion will allow the company to ship more Raptor 2 engines more rapidly to Starbase, which will be needed since each Starship Super Heavy rocket will soon require 39 of those engines, and Elon wants to build a thousand Starships to colonize Mars. His next Starship Super Heavy rocket is under construction as we speak. Booster 5 recently received its grid fins as final stacking nears, and SN21's nose cone is finishing up tile placement before joining the rest of its body. While we don't have a date for the highly anticipated orbital launch, according to internal posters, NASA is looking forward to studying Starship's star brick thermal tiles during re-entry, possibly around March 2022. Quote, Starship's thermal protection systems is intended to provide a dramatic leap forward by demonstrating operational reuse, requiring minimal to no maintenance between flights. Thus, this partnership with NASA will allow SpaceX to enable the first ever fully reusable orbital launch and entry vehicle. Sounds like NASA is trying to make sure everyone is aware they're helping. I'm helping. <laughs> NASA, you can help us all if you just stop with your cringy ass propaganda videos. You're gonna literally see the craters on the moon with your oh, own oh, eyes. Oh, I get it. With your own eyes, I'm telling you. News broke just as we were dropping last Friday's video that SpaceX hit a valuation of 100 billion dollars. That's a 33% increase from their 74 billion dollar worth in February. This is of course mostly thanks to SpaceX's Starship and Starlink programs. Elon says they're currently talking to airlines about installing Starlink on their commercial planes, so if you're all about that, be sure to let your favorite airliner know. 
and it's probably a good idea that you also let them know that you would like a pilot for your flight as well. Damn. Oh no! But speaking of Starlink, it appears we can expect a polar launch to happen out of Vandenberg as soon as next week. One was scheduled for Sunday morning, but was delayed for reasons unknown. And finally, SpaceX shared a few pictures of their Crew-3 passengers testing out flight hardware in preparation for their launch to the space station on October 30th. Killer boots, man! And now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Wednesday, Captain Kirk impersonator William Shatner climbed aboard Blue Origin's thrice-flown New Shepard rocket and ascended to the edge of space with his three fellow passengers. After capsule separation prior to Apogee, the passengers egressed from their seats oh. and experienced what it felt like to weigh nothing. Oh, wow. I can't believe this. Their booster made a pinpoint landing for this fourth mission, like a flying virus in heat. And the capsule popped shoots bra, poofing down in the West Texas desert. Nobody managed to shat their pants above the Carmen line on this one, so that means none of them are real astronauts in my book. However, that's not to say the experience didn't bring the shat to tears. Is the most profound experience I can imagine. Congrats, it was cool to send William Shatner to space. The following day, Shatner reported feeling soreness in his 90 year old body. He is the oldest person in history to go to space. Well, that's all, folks. Thanks for watching. Shout out to those of you supporting the show. Our eccentric polos are now available to order. Just one of several ways you can support what we do. Link in the description below. Do have a nominal weekend. And until next time, Godspeed.